Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Analyze This, where we basically get to talk about everything business, finance, and the economy. My name is Tunji Andrews, and with me on the show is my co-host. I'm Arisa Ugu, and today we're going to be talking about the Nigerian stock market and why the average investor is afraid of it. Now, I hear a lot of people, when they're talking about investing, they'd rather do safe investments, mm -hmm. but they, they say things like, I don't do stocks, or... I know a lot of people that got burnt in the stock market. You yeah. just lose all your money. Everything. I know. But the, thing <laughs> is, but the thing is, I think it comes from a lack of understanding about how the market works. Yes, you can lose money, but you can also make a lot mm -hmm. of money. Now, in 2008, when a lot of people lost money, it was because people that it, the stock market became very popular. Yeah. <laughs> so people were making money. It was the height of the market. And it was almost like, People were, um, th there was this narrative that the stock market was a money doubling scheme. Mm -hmm. So put your money inside this stock. In two weeks' time, you get, you double. get double and you can get your money out. And, <laughs> you know, that cycle, you know, kept going on until people weren't making any money and the um, market was taking like a nosedive. Now, the thing is, the stock market is volatile in its nature. So it goes up and it goes down. The trick is to buy when the markets when the prices are low and sell when the prices are high so if you are buying a stock at the height of the market and then you panic when the market starts to take a nosedive and you sell you're realizing your losses mm -hmm. so what i don't get though <laughs> was people now started borrowing to go into the stock market so they would borrow money from banks so that they could double their money and then quickly pay back the debt and that was fine mm -hmm. for a while but when the um, the market started to crash not only were people losing money from stocks, they still had debts to pay. Yeah. Now, what I didn't understand was at the height of the market, banks were lending pe money to people who were non-stock brokers and not seasoned investors to buy stocks because you know people were making money from it without collateral. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I wanted to borrow $20 million from the bank to develop a property, they'll ask me for collateral now. Mm -hmm. that's, that's equal to or more than the loan that I want to take. But if you were buying stock at that time, they weren't really asking people for collateral. They were using the stocks as collateral. But in its nature, stocks are volatile. So if it goes up, it's going to come down at some point. So I was really confused about that. Well, well, for that, um, you, you kind of generally understand the principle of that. It's yeah. equities lending. It's, it's the general for capital market. For stock brokers, Ex not yeah, individuals who don't and, understand what they're doing. Yeah, people who are kind of savvy in, in terms of yeah. equities lending. So... I get that they, they wanted to help develop the capital market, but it, it, was, it was not done very properly. So even at that time, um, sorry to say this, but my tailor even got such <laughs> a sort of credit. And he, he was always um, calling me to ask for advice because the banks were calling him. Because after the crash, he was now even owing the bank more money. money. So they, were, they kept calling and kept calling. And, and he, was, you know, he had issues with that. But generally, we need to understand how these things work in a, in a cycle, right? So there's the boom and the bust. There's the boom and the bust. So um, prior to 2008, there was a boom. And that was when everybody else, the market, the market was really it. going up. And then right around 2008, there was a bust. So what you want to do is buy when, there's, when we're just coming out of the bust mm -hmm. and ride the wave back up just before there's another bust that <laughs> you get. So you ride to the boom. You ride the boom and then you kind of sell. So basically, when people are running towards the stock market, you run want away to be from running it. away in the and other when direction. When people are fearful, that's when you want, you want to, to go buy. in. Yeah. So like this, uh, this is the point where you want to actually go into the stock market. Mm. The, the prices are quite low. I mean, yeah. you're hearing banks you selling advantage. for around two, three naira. Uh, banks that actually have good fundamentals because like i mean the thought is you want to hold buy and hold for a very long period, period. so you want to hold for between five to ten years because if the bank is solid you know that in 10 years it will still be around so in that 10 years time it will have appreciated in value based on things like inflation and the others so you want to look at very solid companies you want to look at very solid banks in different sectors not just buying because everybody, everybody is buying that. So you want to look at the fundamentals of the business. Is this a business that you would buy if you could buy the whole business? Exactly. Um, how liquid is it? So when you put your money in, 
can you sell it tomorrow or next tomorrow? You want to make sure that you're investing long term. So invest money that you don't need five to 10 years from now. So what you want to do, guys, is buy low and sell high. Now let's take it to the streets and see what the people are saying. A reflection of um, the global economy, you know, the kind of recession we're experiencing all over the world. But in due course, the market is going to rebound and uh, going by what is going on now with what the, the council is doing in terms of uh, building investors' con confidence. By the time everything settles down, the market is going to rally and everything is going to be good for the country. First and foremost, we need to, uh, we need to do more of orientation. You know, because really, we need to let people understand what the stock market is all about. We need to let people know that the market is a market for, for long term, you know, source of finance. We need to let people know that it is important they, they, they attach themselves to a portfolio manager, as the case may be, or to, to go for or the service of an investment analyst. Somebody who can really give them investment advice and tell them how to, to invest in the right way. So doing that will help us a lot. Then we equally need to tidy, more, to tidy up some of our fiscal policy. Government needs to do, to come up with policies that we, we actually attach a lot of things to the capital market because that is the barometer for measuring the economic performance. So whatever economic policy government wants to do, they must factor in the impact it will have on the capital market. You know, the stock market long trades, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it comes down. But I have, I know people that have had good experiences, so it's risky, but the, the, like they say, the more risky, the more, um, the more the benefit, the more interest. No, I don't really know much about stock exchange. My parents have, I guess. I actually bought stocks for me once. I can't remember the bank, but when the banks actually folded up, my, I, didn't, I didn't really follow up with the, um, with the stocks that they bought for me at that point. Uh, yes, I did for a while, but I didn't uh, cash in on it. Uh, unfortunately, when the market turned or it affected me, but initially, yes, I got some some profits from it. Yes, definitely. I've been playing the stock market for quite a number of years. Uh, I had my experience in terms of what happened in uh, 2008, 2009 and stuff like that, where uh, the market fell a lot of people. I bite my fingers at that time. Uh, though before then, I had been in the market, I made a lot of money. And, uh, you know, after that time as well, you know, the market is coming up now. And, uh, you know, in going to stock market, when people are running away, it is the best time that you go in. When you go in, you make a lot of money. And uh, when people are already coming in, you will just exit and, uh, you know, you will have made your money and uh, go. If, apart from going into uh, buying lands and selling, that's estate management, I think the stock market is about where can, you can make a lot of money as well. Did you hear what that guy said? <laughs> the stock market is a barometer for what is going on in the economy. I love it. He's obviously an analyst. Yeah, I think so. I think so. He, he said some words, counsel. Yeah. You know, he kind of <laughs> used those terminologies that, you know, the stock market people use. But I, I think um, my general problem with the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and it's not a thing that is, I mean, unknown to uh, participants of the market, is that we tend to chase the big ticket deals, right? Mm -hmm. So the Nigerian Stock Exchange is would do um, a roadshow in Asia, going to talk to foreign investors and, and all the rest. And they come in once in a while, and some of, it's, it's actually good to have them in. But like now that we're, the market is down, those are the first guys to actually exit. Mm -hmm. And that really affects the market a lot. And instead of us, I would rather us go to the Aspandas, the uh, Alabas, the Okearins, to talk to those people there and educate them about the stock exchange and have them actually put in their money long term. I mean, that's a very good way for them to save their money as against, you know, having their jaws and the rest. So if we can start to look that way, I think we will yeah, have a better I think market. In general, I think in general, when you think about what people on the streets were saying, and just in general, people are afraid of the Nigerian stock market because they don't understand, understand it. it. So I completely agree. I think that a lot of financial education needs to be done to educate the average person about the benefits mm -hmm. of the Nigerian stock market. Again, if you're looking at the biggest complaint of the average Nigerian entrepreneur, they'll tell you is access to capital. And 
The Nigerian Stock Exchange has established a second tier market called the ASEM, which is targeted at SMEs. Now, with this, with the ASEM market, it is easier to get on it because it doesn't have as many requirements as the main board. So you only have to have been in business for two years. You need audited accounts. It's a fraction of the cost of listing on the Nigerian stock market. And I, don't, I think because of the lack of financial education, a lot of small businesses don't know that this is available to them. Mm. So they need to do more in terms of educating um, people on how they can raise capital using the alternative board. The alternative board is, um, uh, has been around. I think the biggest success story of that is Omoluabi Microfinance, which is a fantastic thing. Yeah. Because all those businesses on that board are actually, they, they're now visible mm -hmm. uh, to, I mean, they're businesses that the average person wouldn't have known. Yeah. So your business also can uh, benefit from that. And also there is news from the grapevine or from the stock exchange that there's a third tier boss coming through that might be um, setting up sometime in September, and that is fantastic. It's uh, going for a lower class of businesses, startups. So you uh, try and get informed. I mean, more information about the stock exchange. It can help your business raise capital. It can also help you as an investor um, think long term. Because I mean, there are people who invested in Facebook when it was a fraction of what it is today, yeah. and they're Apple. billionaires right now. So I mean, you can start with smaller companies in do Nigeria. You, do you think that the problem is SMEs, especially in Nigeria, don't want to give up equity. That's another problem. So they'll problem. rather go to the bank and get debt that's relatively more expensive than, you know, give up some control of their business. Mm. So people, when I talk to other people about this, they'll say things like, I don't want to be accountable to someone else about, you know, my books. But those are the things, your, um, your audited accounts, corporate governance, your accountability to shareholders, those are the things that make for a stronger business mm -hmm. long term. So I feel like people need to get that. I'd rather own um, 1% of a 100 million naira than have a 100% of 1 million. So equity like, is a good way to, you know, to raise to capital. And, and, and I think at the end of the day, what you have to look at if you, uh, if you want to invest on the stock exchange is um, what your strategy is. Mm. Uh, as long term, short term, medium term. And also because of the fact that the um, stock exchange is segmented into sectors of the economy. So there's the banking, the financial services, basically. There's the oil and gas. There's the industries. Uh, so you can pick out one business from each of those sectors that you kind of have looked at their books, you looked at their projections, mm -hmm. and you're able to see their long-term aspirations and say, okay, um, this business, I think it will still be around in 30 years, and then invest in it. That's if yeah. you're going long-term. Um, I wouldn't advise for the average investor to think short-term, short -term because that is it takes a lot of information, data for you to be able to do that. Let's leave that to the professionals. For us, let's think very long term. So basically, guys, you want a diversified portfolio. You want to be invested in different industries so that when one is down, you're covered in another one. So for example, let's say oil and gas companies are down at the moment. Agricultural stocks might be going up, so you're kind of covered. Again, back to financial education, you need to be clear on your investment goals. So why are you investing in the first place? Mm -hmm. You don't want to put your rent money in stock markets. You want to put money that you're using to build long-term wealth, so five to ten years. Again, you want to speak to an investment advisor so that you have a professional guiding you through these decisions. But do your own research. So do your own preliminary research before you actually go and speak to someone so that you're clear on what it is you want to achieve. You want to put yourself in a position where you're investing because it is aligned with your own investment goals. So a lot of stocks are actually trading below their average price. So this is a good time to take advantage of the market. So things are way cheaper than they usually are. Um, and it is an opportunity for the long term. So I hope that helped you demystify the stock market. Thank you for watching this episode of Analyze This. To continue the conversation, the hashtag is Analyze This. The handle is at Andani TV. And my handle is at Smart Money RSA. And my handle is at Tunji Andrews. Till next time, guys.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Faust, aka Faust the Bad Guy. Well, in today's lesson, I will teach you how to subscribe to the Indani TV channel. All you have to do is click on this. So simple, straightforward. 